Okay, this is Professor Cummings coming giving you another video on derivatives and in this one we're going to look at the rules of derivatives. Now, in our last video, you know, uh, number 3, I believe, what we looked at was uh, the limit theorem or the limit method of finding a derivative. Uh, I'll put a link in the description box so you can see how we work through this method. I don't want to go through that again, but it was, a, as you can see here, it was a long and cumbersome method, uh, several steps, a lot of algebra, uh, plugging, plugging uh, our x and our f of x into our original definition here of what a derivative is. And from this uh, original function of x squared, f of x is x squared, what we came up with was this derivative which is just f of f prime of x is equal to 2x. Now, like I said, that is a very cumbersome method, one that is not always practical, one that we don't always want to have to go about using that. So what we did, or what I want to do in this video, is show you methods for finding a derivative using some of the derivative rules. Help circumvent a lot of these, these uh, more cumbersome practices. So the first rule I want to show you is the power rule. Now the power rule is one of the simpler rules of derivatives. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most fundamental rules because it shows up in so many of the other rules of derivatives. What you have is an, a function of x is equal to x raised to the n, and n just represents some uh, integer that doesn't equal zero. Now to take the derivative, or f prime of x, you take that coefficient n, multiplied by x, so now n is a coefficient raised to n minus 1, so you subtract 1 from whatever the value of n was. And you can see with that original equation when f of x was equal to x squared, f prime of x was equal to 2x. That did follow the product rule, so it's just the coefficient came down to the front, or excuse me, the exponent came to the front, became a coefficient, and x minus 1 or n minus 1 is just equal to 1, so the derivative is 2x. So that was just the product rule. We, you know, by knowing this rule, we're able to get past all of those extra steps from the limit method. Now let's look at a couple of examples. So we have here x, or f of x is equal to x raised to the 10. So you can see that the method of using this for uh, using the power rule is f prime of x, f prime of x, new pen, is equal to the co the exponent made as a coefficient, so 10 times x raised to the exponent minus 1 or 9. Whoa. So that would be the derivative of f of x, or x raised to the 10 can see that is the way we'd go for using the power rule. Another example, and this one, I, I like this example because it shows a far more complicated uh, uh, function. It's not just a simple, you know, singular term. Now, how would you do something like this? Well, here's a little message here. The derivatives of the sum, the derivatives of the sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives. So what does that mean? That means that when you have a function like this, which is made up of of a series of terms add together. What you would do is you take a derivative of each term independently and from there you're going to get the derivative of the entire function. So in this case the derivative of x raised to the 5 halves this power rule still applies so you'd have the coefficient we would be uh, 5 over 2 times x and then subtracting 1 from that would be 2 over 2, so it would be 3 halves. So 5 halves times x raised to the 3 halves would be the derivatives. The derivative. And this, on this particular term, you have 3x, and you're going to have the uh, power rule, so the exponent becomes a coefficient, so it's 3 times x times 1, which would be that coefficient, so it's day 3, and n minus 1 and since there's an implied 1 on this particular term, that just goes to 0, so you end up with just the coefficient, which is 3. And here for x, or 4 times no 
term of x, which would just go to 0. So you end up with, again, the power rule for this, which would just be 5 halves as a coefficient times x times 5 halves minus 1, or 3 halves. Then you have 3, and that second, uh, the last term goes to 0. The next rule I want to talk about is the product rule, which is a little more complicated but still fairly easy to understand. What you have here is you have the product of two different terms. So f of x, a function, uh, and g of x, a second function. And you're looking at the product. Now, in order to get the, the derivative of this, it's just a matter of taking the derivative of the first term times the second left alone, and then the first term left alone times the derivative of the second, okay? And those added together is the product rule. You know, so it's a fairly straightforward rule of thumb, and you know, it shows up quite a bit. So let's look at uh, some of the examples. So you got this term, which is the first term, which is x squared, or rather you can think of it as the first function, multiplied by what would be g of x, which is x cubed plus 4. Now remember the power rule. You know, uh, the sum of the derivatives equal to the derivative of the sums. So when we take the derivative of the second function, we're still going to look at each term independently. So you're going to have to combine that with this rule, but you know, it's still taking it step by step becomes uh, you know, a, a fairly straightforward process. So here we're going to take the derivative of the first term which is just going to be 2x and times x cubed plus 4 left alone. You know, so 2x times the quantity of x cubed plus 4 plus the first term, which is just x squared, times the derivative of the second term. So that would end up being 3x plus 0. Oh, and then we have uh, the derivative would, since you're using the power rule, it would be 3x raised to the second, because we've got to subtract 1 from that exponent. Okay, so you got the derivative of the first term, which is just 2x times the second term, or second function, which is x cubed plus 4, plus the derivative of the first term, or excuse me, the first term left alone, which is x squared, times the derivative of the second term, which is 3x squared plus 0. And we can simplify this a little bit, which is 2x times x cubed plus 4 plus 3x to the 4th. And you said you got the uh, terms and all the same, so that's the, for the derivative, and then simplified a little bit more. You end up with 2x times the quantity of x cubed plus 4, 4 plus 3x to the 4th. So that's the product rule. Again, you know, it's just, uh, you know, the product of two functions, derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the deriv derivative of the second. The last one I want to go over today is the quotient rule. The quotient rule looks similar to the product rule, but it's even more complicated still. And this is one you can get tripped up on fairly easily. So that's based off of the quotient of two functions. Okay, so f of x over g of x. And the way to solve this is you have the uh, lower term or the denominator left alone times the derivative of the numerator minus, and this is a uh, important portion, minus the numerator left alone times the derivative of the denominator. All this divided by the square of the denominator. And that's a pretty important point. So you can see it's more complicated than the product rule, but still, you know, not overly complicated. It still has sort of a, a, a pattern to it that you're going to follow. Now there's a mnemonic device that I learned on this one. Low D 
d high minus high d low over low low so it's an important thing to keep in mind so low d high derivative of the, the high the numerator minus high the numerator times d low the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared now let's look at an example of this one so you've got two different functions so you've got a x squared plus 1 over x to the fifth plus x. Now you can look at this uh, and just look what the um, derivatives of both terms would be. So the derivative of the numerator would just be 2x. That's the numerator's derivative. And the de uh, derivative of the denominator would just be 5x to the fourth plus 1. So now we have the derivatives and the original terms. So we just have to put it into the pattern. So you got the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative, this should be to the fourth, the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. So that is the quotient rule. I hope this was helpful. Hope you, you got anything out of this. Um, I can do a few more examples, but before I do that, there's one more method that I want you to uh, show you, and it's the chain rule, which is you know probably one of the more complicated methods, and I, I want to put a whole video together just on that one by itself. Okay, so this is Professor Cummings, and thanks for watching.